dear students and this week we are going to discuss about the WTO agreement on agriculture and one of the very important agreement in WTO. And today we are specifically going to discuss the world trade on agriculture. Mostly we are going to look into the producers of agriculture all over the world through the food and agriculture organization data which is compiled very recently. So, the objective of today's class is to find out who is the largest producers of agriculture products and traders of the product. So, that from next class onwards we will be able to understand the dynamics of agricultural trade all over the world. So, the introductory classes which we have already explained uh, the agriculture agreement was one of the highly controversial agreement as well as there is stiff opposition from developing countries to conclude this particular agreement. So, still the negotiations are going on on the WTO agreement on agriculture and from every ministerial conferences this is a, this is a conflicting issue especially some of the ministerial conference or conferences like Cancun ministerial conference. So, let us see that what is the world agriculture scenario and then uh, next class on which we will discuss about the agreement. So, it is very necessary to understand the world agriculture production and also what is uh, the subsidies provided by the countries. Then definitely Indian agriculture sector also we will have a look at and in, in when compared to the other nations. And agriculture as everybody knows that it is from time immemorial period it is produced locally at the same time the distribution of resources to other parts of the world are very important because it is the historic patterns of settlements, colonialization and also the infrastructure and the most importantly the transport of food materials from one continent to other continent which contributed to the international trade. Presently the food production is a global issue or it is you can say that it is a global market and global production and distribution systems. So, this is mostly happened in the post colonial period. So, uh, so most importantly from 1950 onwards, but if you see in the 20th century starting from 1900 to 1914 or 1914 to 1938 we can see that most of the countries are protected highly I would say that highly protected their markets. This is mainly to preserve the food security of their own people and their own uh, people and their own country. And also the agriculture trade happens because of consumer preferences these consumer preferences emerge as the global markets and significantly added to the international trade. So, you can see that some of the countries and some of the countries and their entire economy is dependent on agriculture production and export. Some of the countries like India the largest employment sector is the agriculture sector even though it contributes lowest to the GDP of the country. So, in the nutshell we can see that the agriculture plays a crucial role in every country's economy. So, and for the last 50 years at least shown an impressive I would exactly say that it is uh, more than uh, 50 years especially from the 
event of the conclusion of the GATT in 1947, the international trade has witnessed or the merchandise trade has increased 17 fold. This is the FAVO report, Food and Agriculture Organization report says. So, that is more than 3 times faster than the growth of world economic output. So, the preferences, trade preferences, protectionism and everything has overturned in the advent of world trade within the period of GATT as well as the WTO period for the last 26 or 27 years. So, if we look into this particular uh, 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 the figure, we can see that agriculture whether what is the situation of agriculture imports and exports. You can see that in terms of developing countries and least developed countries, in terms of developing countries exports, it has declining substantially from the 1960s. So, this data is up to 2000. So, it means pre WTO period that the substantially GATT period and from 1995 to 2000 5 year data. So, you can see that the net exports of developing countries are substantially decreased. This exports are specific to agricultural exports. At the same time net imports are also is uh, in for, for least developed countries it is in it is completely decreasing. And it means that agriculture net exports from developing countries are decreasing. And also the local mercantile trade. So, again you can see the mercantile trade from 1961 to 2000 there is a steep declining from developing countries and least developed countries. So, who are the producers? So, you can very well uh, you know understood from this figure that exports are decreasing. At the same time, the local uh, merchandise exports are also decreasing in developing and least developed countries or less developed countries. So, it means <coughs> that we have to explore who is the producer of agriculture merchandise. So, some of the countries become net exporters to net, net importers in a period of time. So, we are talking about this GATT period. So, this is mainly happened due to the changes in the markets and the preferences of countries in importing the goods, which we already saw that these imports, the quantity of imports are increasing. And at the same time, you can see that during the 1960s, developing countries were doing better and there was a trade surplus of 6.7 US billion. And when it comes to the 90s, the 90s, there was instead of trade surpluses, there were deficits. So, it means net exporters become net importers. And the outlook or output or the projection to 2030 says that there will be a trade deficit in all the developing countries or the trade deficit is going to increase, widen and, and that is the overall net import level is going to the tune of uh, the US 31 billion US dollars. At the same time, the imports, so the exports are going to decrease, the imports are imports of food will increase to around 50 billion US dollars. So, you can see that so, so there is a substantial change in the preferences of exports and imports and some of the countries become uh, exporters become importers, net importers. So, this is change in a period of maybe uh, last 50 years, this happened from 1960s onwards. 
So, net exporters become net importers. If you see this particular data of agricultural imports and agricultural exports. So, you can see that agriculture imports are substantially increasing, substantially increasing from 1980s, even though it has I know the yeah, especially agriculture imports are increasing throughout and agricultural exports are there the, the line is not very prospective. There was a, some up and down up to 1980s there were it was going exports were going up and then it is going down. So, there is fluctuations in exports at the same time the imports are steadily uh, is increasing. So, if you look into the employment scenario agriculture employment in agriculture and forestry and fishing. So, this is a very uh, recent data up to 2021. So, the food and agriculture organization says, so you can see that more than uh, 200 million people those who work and the 200 million people work in only two continents that is only two countries which you can see that that may be in India and China and all other countries the numbers are very less the numbers even 100. So, you can see some of the countries in uh, you know uh, the, the countries in other continent the Asian continent and the African continent which you can find and others are less than 50, 50 million employment. So, we have huge employment is in the Asian countries the agriculture sector is providing employment in Asian countries especially India and China and India 60 percent of the employment is in agriculture sector. Everybody knows that India one of the largest the largest population in the world and largest producer of agriculture goods yes India requires uh, uh, the huge quantity of uh, agricultural uh, food items and agriculture sector is the largest employment provider and this is the scenario all over the world. So, agriculture sector in other countries for example, in Americas and you know very very small contribution to the employment, but Asia substantially they contributed to the employment. So, if we look into some of the key facts the value addition value addition and value addition from if you take from 2000 to 20 2020 the a 20 year span and there is value addition is 78 percent, 78 percent value addition to the agriculture goods which contributes trillions to the economy 3.6 trillion within a period of 20 years. So, innovations are happening in the agriculture field. If you look into the global GDP the share of agriculture in the global GDP it is up to 4 percent and it has been stable at 4 percent since 2000. What does it mean for a period of 20 years it is consistently providing it is consistently at 4 percent. So, it means that the contribution to the world GDP is constant, but value addition in uh, uh, is value addition in agriculture sector is going on very fast more and more uh, uh, so the trillions are adding to the value addition to the agriculture uh, as products. If you look into the workforce unfortunately, if you take the same time same span of around 20 21 years it is declined from 40 percent to 27 percent. So, it means that the global workforce in the agriculture is declining. So, it is reached 27 percent. So, that means you know it was uh, you know more than you know 40 percent it was in 2000 and it become 27 percent. So, it is, it is a huge decline from 1043 million to 866 million. It's this this is a, a a huge decline 
in people those who are employed in the workforce in uh, uh, it's a global workforce. So, why it is happened? In many of the countries, the employment sector, this agriculture is not seen as an employment sector other than the Asian countries. That is the workforce in the agriculture sector is declining. Most importantly and interestingly, you can see that the women participation in agriculture sector is I would say that highly confined to developing and especially a least developed countries, mostly least developed countries. For example, the highest women participation in agriculture is from Nepal and then it is directly going to Rwanda, Mozambique, Sudan, Burundi. Congo, all African countries and <coughs> you can find only one maybe you can say that a highly developed country or a developed country that is the only South Korea. So, otherwise 99 percent are African countries and the top contributor is Nepal from Asia even India is not coming in the this particular list. So, world coverage is you know totally coming to average 37 percent of women employment or women participation share of women. So, the top countries, so you can see that none of the developed countries and surprisingly I would say that not surprisingly even developing countries only least developed countries are in this list. So, what is the production? What you produce and what you export? So, if you look into the production, so the FAO says that chicken, chicken is the largest meat that produced in 2020. And what is in trade? Cereals, cereals are the important product of export from Americas, from Europe and the largest importer is Asia. So, cereals are the most traded commodity and the largest exporters are Europe and America and the largest importer are Asia. So, it means that Asia is going to be an agriculture market and most of them are developing countries and who is the exporter? It is the America and Europe. So, when we discuss about the agriculture agreement definitely we will discuss about the, the these countries interest in WTO. What is their arguments on WTO and what should be the agriculture agreement? It is very clear that it's it, it's America and Europe together are the largest exporters of agriculture in the world, and the recipient, the importer, is Asia. And if you look into the primary production, production of crops by the main producers. So, the largest producer of sugar, largest producer of sugar is Brazil, around forty percent, and then. Another 20 percent is produced by India and around maybe uh, you know 5 percent is produced by China and then you can see 35 percent around is produced by all others. So, sugar alone 40 percent of the world production of sugar is by one country that is Brazil a developing country and it is not the developed countries those who produce sugar. And then it comes to the, the other for example, maize and the number one producer is United States, then China, then Brazil, then others, others constitute around uh, 40 percent. So, these three countries uh, together constitute around 60 percent of the maize produce. And most importantly you can see that around 60 percent of wheat is produced by 
you know uh, all the countries together 60 percent and three countries only three countries those who produce uh, 40 percent of the wheat that is China, India and uh, Russia. So, the largest producer of wheat in the world is China, India and Russia. That is why we recently heard about uh, the, the problem of export of wheat from Russia because of uh, the, the Ukraine-Russia uh, conflict. So, then it comes to the rice paddy, mostly the Asian countries, the rice eaters are the Asian countries and the largest producer is again China, it is not India, India is only second. And interestingly, you can see that the third, third largest producer of rice is Bangladesh. So, these three countries produces around 60 percent. So, and China alone produces around 30 percent. China alone produces around 30 percent of the total rice all over the world. Then it comes to another product that is oil palm. So, the oil palm industry is absolutely confined to um, probably uh, one country that is Indonesia. Around 60 percent of 60 percent of the palm oil or oil palm, I would say that oil palm is produced by Indonesia. Then maybe another you know uh, 30 percent is produced by uh, Malaysia, then a small percentage is produced by Thailand and hardly 10 percent is produced by all others. So, if we take potato again the producer is China, India and Ukraine. So, now it is the that, that export also severely affected and all others constitute 60 percent of potatoes. So, what is the commonality in this particular figure? The commonality in this particular figure is you can see that sugarcane, maize, wheat, uh, rice, oil palm, potatoes, all most of the countries it is produced by Asian countries other than Brazil or you can see that uh, even Russia also. I would say that developing countries and other than United States in maize, you can find you cannot find even a single developed country producing majority of this particular product. But still why Asia is the largest importer? Because in Asia you take the first two countries China and India, the largest population in the world India and now India has taken over China, the second largest population and these people consume these uh, commodities, agriculture production and also that is why they are the largest importer of that is the logic uh, says. And it we comes to the vegetable oils, vegetable oil production and palm oil, which we already said that Indonesia and Malaysia is the largest producer of uh, uh, you know the largest producer of oil palm. Then you can see that within the oil palm it is uh, the, 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 the largest production is on oil palm and the second largest is soya bean and the third is rapeseed, then sunflower and others. So, if you look into the production of vegetable oils, who is the producer? Again it is Indonesia, oil palm, Malaysia and then Thailand which we already saw. Then soya bean, again you can see that China, US and Brazil and rapeseed it is you can you can see that some of the countries like uh, you know the canada china india and you know that the asian countries mostly uses oil palm and uh, then soya bean and rapeseeds and sunflower and for example the oils like canola and others are used by the developed countries and costly as well so the oil palm so you can see that the oil production vegetable oil specifically you can see that these are the countries which produces oil for the world then uh, so sugar which we already saw that so the brazil is the largest producer india is also one of the uh, largest producers and then raw sugar production of raw sugar then some of the countries like thailand we can find china us russian federation mexico france and others so, around 70 percent of the sugar is produced by maybe 5 countries, 5 or 6 countries. 
So, this is uh, very important because the sugar prices are controlled by these particular countries, especially I would say that India and Brazil. So, subsidies to agriculture that is one of the contentious, highly contentious point in WTO. So, you can see that and, 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 and uh, subsidy to this uh, oil production, vegetable oil production and subsidies to sugar is also one of the uh, you know uh, heated uh, discussion topic in WTO. Because these countries cannot stop subsidies to these particular products because they are the largest producers of these commodities as well. And then uh, we can see that the when it comes to the milk, we can see Asia is the largest producer of milk at the same time within Asia you can see that India is largest producer of milk 21 percent of the world production the largest producer of milk is India. But the problem is India is the largest consumer also of milk. So, we are not exporting milk. Then you see the United States, uh, Pakistan, China, Brazil, Germany, uh, Russian Federation, France and others. So, if you take as a whole Asia is the largest producer of milk then Europe, America, Africa and Oceania. So, India is, is a constitute India and US constitute almost more than 30 percent. Then if you take India, US and Pakistan it constitute almost 40 percent of the milk production. So, milk is produced in these countries and also you can see that it is not Europe. At the same time for example, uh, one of the you know important content of proteins egg again the largest producers are Asia, then again America, then Europe, Africa and Oceania the same pattern and the who is the largest producer it is China, then the US and then India. Then you can see Indonesia is a, a, a big player and then it goes to Brazil. So, you can see these names agriculture production the common names in Asia and Americas common names. And the European countries are you know this come very late, so, they are nowhere in the maybe in, you know the largest producers. And but it comes to you can see that again uh, the world exports of food, food and the food trade by value chain. So, you can see the largest in the value of food in, in terms of value it is the vegetables fruits and vegetables are the largest exporting items. Then cereals, then metals, so then sorry meat and meat products, then fish, beverages, dairy products, then other products. So, fruits and vegetables are the or second is cereals are the largest traded agricultural products you know in the world. So, whom are the producers? We have to look into fruits and vegetables, then cereals. We saw, uh, we saw that US and Europe are the largest producers of cereals and the Asia is the largest importer of cereals. And if you look into the food net trade by region wise, so the, the largest is the United States, then comes Oceania and then comes the Europe. Europe the food net trade is going up and then Africa and Asia it is highly going down. You can see the Asia it is high drop up to the for the last 20 years. The food net trade is going down it is not going up only in America, Oceania and Europe it is going up. It means that only developing countries the food trade is going up and the developing countries it is going down it have lot of implications. So, cereals we saw that within cereals it is divided between wheat, maize, rice and others. So, wheat and maize is constitute almost uh, you know 70 percent more than uh, 80 percent uh, you know it is almost 80 percent only two items wheat and maize these are the exporting items the traded items. The main traded items which you can see that the main importers 
the main importers of uh, wheat are China, then again you can see Turkey, Indonesia, these are the importers and also you can see a sizable number of other countries as well. At the same time you see the exporters, it is Russia, US and Canada are the largest exporters of wheat and maize you take importers are China, Japan and Mexico and largest exporters are US, Argentina, Brazil. When it comes to rice, the largest importers are you can see largest importers are Saudi Arabia, Philippines, China and produce exporters are India. Remember the two largest countries the producers of rice is India and China. At the same time China is the largest importer. So, India is one of the largest producer as well as the exporter of rice. But very recently the government of India come out with an order banning all exports. There is a reason. So, the government of government uh, you know uh, expecting a decline in production. It is going to affect the world market. The prices will go up. Secondly, exporter Vietnam, Thailand and all others constitute almost 50 percent. So, almost 35 percent of the rice exports are from India. So, India have a major role in the agriculture sector. So, from we can see that and also uh, the, the, the high prevalency of food insecurity all over the world. So, we will see that India has passed a, a, a food security law in response to the agriculture agreement and we will see later. And also in every continent there is food insecurity, there is severe food insecurity I would say that uh, food uh, you know the, the availability is very less. And also you can see that especially uh, you can see the, 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 the largest differences it shows from men and women is in America and Caribbean. So, still the, the food security, food insecurity is prevalent in some of the some parts of the world. And here you can see exporting countries which are the exporters, Africa export is very less. Then who is the exporter? The largest exporter which you can find is the Asia followed by Europe and then you can see that CAS countries. So, CS countries includes all former Soviet Union countries and then South and Central America. So, North America is also one of the important uh, contributor and the Middle East is a very small contributor. Middle East is a very small contributor along with, uh, so we can say that CS countries as well. So, the two largest or I would say that three largest contributors are Asia, then Europe and North America are the largest exporters of agriculture products up to 2020. So, all the data is taken from the Food and Agriculture Organization. So, in, in quantity wise, so you can see that they are these are authenticated uh, data and also see that exporters we saw. So, who is the importers? So, it is not surprising to see that the importers are also uh, the, the, the largest producers are also exporters are also importers as well. For example, Asia and also Europe. So, these exporters are importers as well. So, because it means that they are exporting as well as importing this particular agriculture products. So, here you can see the graph exports and imports. So, exports are going up this is very recent data for the last two decades, imports are also going up equally going up. So, whenever there is a dip in imports there is export also is going down. So, it means that it is highly balanced, 
highly balanced imports and exports. You cannot find a wide difference in this particular map in, in the world exports. So, here food insecurity levels and food insecurity is one of the important factor in the agriculture negotiations in WTO. So, you can see that this severe food security, severe food security you can find it in Africa and Asia, Latin America, then you know uh, uh, Oceania, then the, a, a slight severe food security in Northern America and Europe, even Europe. So, Europe is not devoid from food insecurity. Then you can see the moderate insecurity is also highest in Africa, followed by Latin America, Asia and then if you look at the 2014 situation and 2021 situation there is slight improvement. The food insecurity has increased. So, food and agriculture organization says that the food insecurity is very severe in some of the continents like uh, Africa and Asia. So, so, for our discussion in the coming classes, the food subsidization, who is the subsidizer, highest subsidizers in the world? So, the, 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 uh, the data, some of the data says that, OECD data says that Philippines is the one of the uh, uh, largest supporter, supporter means largest provider of subsidies is Philippines followed by Indonesia, China and India. Remember, we blame, we blame United States and the European Union for providing very high subsidies to their agriculture sector. But the data says that India is also equally a culprit and India is providing more subsidies than the US, but still our agriculture sector is not stable because our consumption is very high and European Union is providing 0 0.6 percent, India and European Union is equally providing 0 0.6 percent subsidies. And some of the countries if you look into Vietnam and Argentina and their total aggregate measurement of support is minus. So, we will see later on what is the aggregate measurement of support this is negative. So, this particular figure completely changes our perception. So, it is not the US and EU that are the highest uh, subsidy, subsidy, subsidy providers in the world, it is other countries especially developing countries. So, you can see the first four countries Philippines, Indonesia, China, India all these are developing countries are the highest providers of subsidy to the agriculture sector. So, it is not the developed countries. So, and what is Indian scenario? Indian scenario is, is very peculiar uh, with regard to this agriculture sector. India has the largest population in the world and at the same time there is the largest importer of agriculture and in certain products and we are the largest exporter of certain products as well. So, in demand, the demand of certain products are very high from India. At the same times, we import most of the agriculture products. So, the agriculture exports and here in 2022 very recent data which says that. So, a target of 60 billion is targeted by India in 2022. So, the income also the government is expecting more and what where we are, whether we have a competitive advantage. Yes, we have a competitive advantage in certain products and we do not have a competitive advantage in certain uh, other products, agro products. So, the, 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 there is so much of uh, criteria which is uh, attached with the competitive advantage, which one of the important thing is the climate, agro climate conditions and which increases the crop cultivations. So, agriculture exports if we look into, so continuously the the, uh, uh, the the exports are increasing even though during the pandemic time we did not so only a very slight uh, uh, decline in exports otherwise it is uh, very high 
and in 2022 the data is not full. So, 2022 up to 2022 for the last uh, you know 5 years which we can see that it is substantially increasing our export also is increasing. So, if you look into the agriculture and allied industries, yes definitely the agriculture sector and uh, the contribution to the GDP is declining. The, the largest even though it is the largest provider of employment in India and that number is also decreasing in, in Asia, Asia it is decreasing and India and China are the largest two countries with the agriculture sector their contribution is also declining. So, this is uh, something which is very alarming. So, in conclusion uh, what the food and agriculture organization data says that yes it is not the developed countries are always the producer of uh, all the, the, the cereals or it is comes to it is sugar or other agriculture products. It is the developing countries it is the developing countries are the producers of most of the products whether it is cereals or it is uh, uh, you know the, the, the oils the vegetable oils which we use it for cooking or, or other important agriculture products it is the developing countries are the producers including Brazil. In some of the areas like maize and other things it is the US and uh, other European countries are at the same time we are exporters of certain products at the same time we are more than exporters we are an importers of agricultural products. So, in conclusion we can see that this data shows where is the opportunity and where is the opportunity lies for the developing countries and at the same time what are the policy measures required for the developing countries and developed countries in order to survive or a, a balanced approach towards the agriculture agreement. So, we will see the development of agriculture agreement in the GATT and WTO in the coming classes. Uh, thank you.